So how do people make decisions? Well, when you ask people how they make decisions, one way they sometimes say that they make decisions, well, let me, let me give you an example. So suppose your parents, or, I, or you also, were searching for a house. How would they say that they searched for the house or decided on the house? What might be a way if, you, if they tried to explain it to you? Like number three, sometimes by explaining how many people are here. Okay, so but maybe they said, okay, we definitely need a house with at least four plus right. bedrooms, right? Yeah. So in fact, and, and of course, when you do a search on the internet, it actually asks you to apply things like this. Usually, what the, most search engines, not all, but most of these search engines will say, okay, how many bedrooms do you want, right? Right away, you've ruled out this set, right? Now, of course, you probably, even before you got there, they probably said, okay, where is it going to be, right? So they probably said it's got to be within some distance of, uh, let's say, uh, Ipswich or something, right? So now you're, you're in this thin slice here. And then within that, so, so in other words, they were saying, okay, and then within that, so maybe they've, they've ruled some things out entirely. We're not quite getting like super, gra well, in the, some of these we are, some of these we aren't, right? There's, there's discrete choices. So in other words, number of bedrooms is basically a discrete, it's a countable variable. Okay, so may, it's, this is actually slightly different than like lexicographic, but okay. So suppose then they said, okay, so here's the set we're considering a month. Right? And they said, within this set, there's, there's two features we're looking at. Let's keep it simple. Let's look at, uh, let's look at, okay, I'm not going to put price in. Okay, notably, I'm not going to put price in because price does not enter into preferences. Price, we separate pre preferences and constraints. Okay. Uh, you can talk about indirect. Let's, let's, so suppose the two factors might have been, let's say, size of the house. So what is its square footage? And what is its uh, distance from, let's say, your school? Okay. So now we have two. Actually, here, these are two continuous variables, basically, size and distance. They can have any fraction in between, although it may not be reported so on the website. Um, wow, it's really windy. So suppose your parents said, okay, we are going to first look for the within our suppose they didn't suppose within their price range, we're gonna look for the largest house we can possibly find. So they said, okay, then and then they, they looked and they said, okay, well. This seems to be the largest house we can find, but actually there's several houses of this exact size. Now, whether you find houses of this exact size, in, I mean, in other words, in the real world, these were gonna be more continuous, so it's very unlikely you'll find houses of the exact size. But simplify this, make this a little bit more discrete. It's much easier to explain like to wrap it discrete. Uh, or maybe they're just listed as having the same size. So what's a reasonable house size? I don't know, some sort of square meter. I don't know if you remember how that works. Let's say 100 <laughs> units, square meters. <laughs> right, so then there was house. So within, among the set of houses of 100 meters, 100 square meters, 100 meters squared, and I apologize if that's like a really insultingly small amount. Right? I, don't, I don't remember. Then they say within that set, so first we'll consider size, but within the set of the same size, we will look for the one that is closest to the school, right? Oh, sorry. Well, let's let's say let's start all over with that. So they would then said we prefer a this lexicographic preferences say that I I consider different categories of or qu quantity different sort of dimensions, and one dimension is the most important dimension, namely size. Right within houses of, and then but then so that but then if there's a tie, the tie-breaking criterion will be a second thing, and maybe if there's a tie in that, there might be even a third 
tie-breaking criteria. So you could have multi-dimensional multi lexicographic tests. Does that make sense? So in other words, okay, I, I, but, but, okay, but like, what does that, what does that imply? Well, suppose that there was a house. I didn't really give myself much space. Suppose B wasn't present. Right? Suppose you just had uh, C, B, and then in fact there was a house with almost as many square meters, right? But so you only have C or B, and then you have this other thing which we'll call D to choose from. Right? Even if it had almost as many square meters and was much closer, they're not going to want to make any trade-off between these two characteristics. They're still going to choose B over D. So there's a, like this priority range. Okay, so how do we specify that formally? Um, and by the way, you can see how this could easily be a, if I'm trying to do this in the context of, suppose I have, I'm supposed I'm trying to build a, a choice model with real data, right? And I'm trying to predict what people will choose and how will that choice change as we vary the product offerings or something like that. You can see how easy it would be to compute this. You can say, all right, well, let's just see, okay, they, let's look at, we're, we're going to we'll either assume or try to figure out what the, what the primary category is and then build this flow chart of what their choices will be. Um, so yeah, so this is actually not not so different than the way that my impression is that this is often dealt with in, in let's say, in industry. Okay, um, let's look at it formal. Let's, let's see what the formal statement says. An individual's preference relationship, if it's lexicographic, lexicographic, I think this has something to do with the letters of the alphabet, uh, like books on shelves and, you know, the dic sorry, when I do alphabetical order, that's lexicographic. I first look for first letter, uh, the second look, look for second letter, unless it's mixed something and then you skip the second letter, then I look at the third letter to break those things. The individual lexicographic reference relation is defined by, all right, now we're going to take some shortcuts here and use some trick references. Okay, X at least as good as Y, X is mainly preferred to Y, if and only if, I'm not sure about these terms either. Um, okay. Uh, okay, well hold on, I have to give you some background here. Each element has, let's say, two features. Okay, so X is actually, as we talked about here, X is actually, uh, X feature, has some amount of feature one, and some amount of feature two, Take this as bundles of goods. Y, bundle Y has some amount of feature one and some amount of feature two. Okay. And this person has a preference ordering. And remember, these could be any, we haven't said what the preference orderings are. So think of these as numbers, whatever. They actually have a preference ordering over feature one and feature two. Okay, which could be anything. We're not tying this down. We're just saying that there's some preference ordering. And then this is how they apply, they have some preference ordering over these features, and then they apply that preference ordering in a particular way to come up with a preference ordering over the bundle of things, or over the, the bundle of goods or whatever. Okay, so X is referred to Y, one, if, I think the X is that, if and only if, I believe, if one. X is referred to Y <laughs> by the first characteristic. In other words, what, oh, sorry, I should put a little subscript one. In other words, to use my perhaps abusive notation here, if, in other words, if, but what I mean by this is if X1, if the first element is, per, is preferred, of the first of X is preferred to the first element of Y. So in your case or your parents' case, if the house was strictly larger, right? If X1 size was, and your parents preferred larger sizes to smaller sizes, could be the other way around. Uh, then, if this was the case, then boom, we're done. Right? So the flowchart is first check this. If it's not decisive, decisive or no, if it's not decisive, 
then go to the second criterion, uh, et cetera, et cetera, could go through multiple criteria. Okay, so if X is strictly preferred to Y, sorry, by, if X is strictly better than Y according to the first criteria, or X1 is strictly better than Y1 perhaps, or suppose this is not the case, if X is as good as Y by the first criteria, so in other words, if X1 and Y1 are different, they have the same size, then we also need to ask the question of the N. If this N of X2 is at least as good, or X, sorry, X is at least as good according to criteria 2 as Y, uh, then X is at least as good as Y. Okay, um, so in other words, if in, in, in practice, in this practical case, if one house is larger in size than another house, we can start from C and D. We know C is better, so the first criterion for B sit, N. Okay, but other possibilities, they're equal. Okay, well, for instance, C and B are equal according to the first criterion. Well, then, if by criterion two, uh, if, if C is at least as good as B, then we know, by criterion two, then we know that the person thinks C is at least as good as B overall. Um, now, uh, so, so, but now, uh, just, you know, looking at, digging into this a bit more, what if C and, and B are actually at the exact same point? Well, C is at least as good as B, but I could apply the same procedure, and I will find that B is at least as good as C, which means that C and I would then be indifferent between C and B. Okay, so this is this is the definition of lexicographic preferences, and we can use this definition in order, to, in order to prove the properties of this definition. In order to prove the properties of lexicographic preferences on things like completeness or transitivity. We need to use this definition and show that it does or does not imply lexicographic preference, uh, that it does or does not imply completeness, or does or does not imply transitivity. Um, and there's different ways we could do those proofs. Okay, you can talk about proofs by construction, proofs by contradiction. Uh, so in other words, you can say, all right, if lexicographic preferences were transitive, then there would be a contradiction, therefore they cannot be transitive. Um, but actually, but actually, to show that lexicographic, one way of showing, in fact, that lexicographic preferences as a whole are not necessarily transitive, I could merely just show one violation of it, and then I've showed that it's not always transitive. Okay, and in fact, it turns out that lexicographic preferences uh, um, are, sorry, now I'm forgetting whether they're transitive and complete. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, um, I talk about much of what we talked about 